Uh, I, I guess this would be for for both guys. And uh, Grant, maybe, maybe you could take it first, and then and then uh, Jalen. What, what are you guys? Um, how are you handling this? And have you guys gone through some of the virtual, I guess, video conferencing yet? And if so, how how's that gone? If, if Grant could take it first. Yeah. Um, can y'all hear me all right if I am on speakerphone? Yeah, I, I can hear you. Um, okay, cool. Um, so, yeah, from my aspect, I feel like we're taking it pretty well. Um, the way everyone's been responding in the group, the group text and just the linebacker group text, like we really, everyone's really still uh, holding each other accountable with like workouts and us just being apart from each other. Um, we, uh, Coach Odom told us, he sent us, a, like, the first week we were gone, he said, um, this isn't time off, this is just time away. So uh, there's a difference in that. Um, but, no, um, regarding the virtual stuff, we uh, we, we hit that head on. Uh, we've been doing a pretty good uh, job at that this week. And um, I know the linebackers, uh, we haven't been meeting as a whole defense um, because I feel like that would be a ton of people. Um, but we've been holding it. We've been keeping our fundamentals down, uh, just our basis of what this defense wants to be. Um, I think that people have really uh, had a good attitude throughout this whole time and just knowing that, like, they can't do anything, like, this isn't in our control at all. And uh, we're just uh, having trust in the people that are making the right decisions for us. Okay, and then, Jalen, if you, if you uh, wouldn't mind taking that, too, just how, how you're kind of handling it and how the virtual uh, conference is going with you. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, it's going good. I think same thing as Grant said. I think we're all being really uh, great on communication. You know, I know in the safety group, uh, we're doing real well with uh, having a little. Um, just Coach Odom just checking up on us, seeing how we're doing, making sure we're refreshed on everything we've learned so far, and making sure we're on top of our schoolwork and all the online classes and everything. And I know that people are um, making sure they get some type of productive work. Uh, where, where they're at. So uh, I think Grant said it best, you know, I think everybody's doing good with communication and strength staff is making sure we're on top of everything as far as uh, physical nutrition and all that. So uh, it's definitely a transition uh, bit for what a lot of people have done, but I think we're handling it really well as a, as a unit. And, and then maybe also for both of you, I, I know how hard you guys must have worked in the winter to, you know, get in the best condition and get stronger and, and all that kind of stuff. And then um, how do you think you're doing in terms of trying to maintain what y'all built up? And do you have weights at home or do you, are you doing, a, you know, I don't know, a push-ups? Or just, what, what are you guys doing to, to try to maintain what you built up? And, and how do you think that's going? Maybe, Grant, you could, you could go first again. Yeah. Uh, speaking for myself, I have a buddy that owns a, a gym. And he gave me the keys, and so we've been going every day uh, by myself and just doing that stuff. But for speaking as a team, I know that our team is sending out uh, different like types of workouts every single day. Coach Ellison, Coach Walker are sending stuff every single day of what you can do to maintain your lower body, uh, maintain just your muscle, your lean muscle mass. Um, but I know in the linebackers, we've kind of all been talking smack to each other, like joking around, like who's the one getting fat, who's the one getting lean. But we've all we've all held each other accountable and. I know um, one thing that we've all we fought so hard in the winter is just how to get our our like conditioning better, or how to get stronger because we're going to be playing a whole different type of football again, um, and just be able to maintain that this spring while we're not there um, is big for our whole football team and just the whole state of Arkansas to see like what we're what we put a bunch of work in just in those three months of this new coaching staff being here, and we don't want it to. I know every single person on this team has a chip on their shoulder to not want it to fade away. So I know everyone's taking care of their business while they're home. Okay, and Jalen, I guess what, you have somebody got you a key for a gym, what, what, what are you doing? Oh man, uh, I, got a, I got a friend, he has his own personal gym as well, so I'm able to go in and uh, work out. I do that every single day, and I have a trainer back at home too, so I feel work-wise, I get a lot of stuff in today. Like, I'm going to get some work in later on today, uh, feel work-wise and stuff like that, but, I know as far as uh, safety unit goes, I know a lot of people are uh, finding a way to uh, stay on top of their uh, workouts as far as either getting in the gym, doing uh, dumbbell work to get stronger, if they're doing field work or find a field they can go to and work out. So I know uh, I know my DV as well, but I know the unit as well, team. I know everybody is finding a way to uh, find work. But, you know, like I said, it's a tough transition, but, you know, this is what builds the team. This is what... You find out who's the 
push through the strong out of everybody. So I feel like my our team is doing a really good job of just being uh, communicative and uh, finding access to uh, find work, basically. And I think that's just going to separate everything. So uh, it's good to know there's a lot of people out there that are on our team that are trying to find a way to uh, get their work in. Okay, well, I hate to motion, but I'll, I'll go ahead and turn it back over to Kyle. Tommy, want to give it another shot? Yeah, Tommy, still can't hear you. How about Trey? You there? I'm here. Hey, Trey. Good to go. Good to go. I, I was curious, uh, Grant, you can take this first. Uh, how are the the online meetings? The coaches get two hours a week. Is that like, do you guys do it in groups, like all linebackers get on a Zoom meeting call, or is it one-on-one? How is that done exactly? So we are, we're doing just position groups right now just to be able to keep the, everything fresh in our head. And what the linebackers are actually doing, we're going through Microsoft Teams. Um, it's an app. Um, that you can be able to like pull up different documents and pull up different like things while you can still see people's faces. So like he can look at all of our faces and we can still be interactive, but then he can pull something up and show us like what our four rules and our bottom line are for our defense. And we can just look at different like aspects while, so we see his computer screen and his face and then we see, so it's like a zoom on steroids, I guess. Um, but other than that, like, that's really, we had a couple, like, we have, like, a operative test, and he sends us out tests every single day, and it's, like, a 15-question test over, like, if this happens, what, what do we, how do we respond as a defense, how do we respond as a Mike linebacker to this, and so we've been keeping just, we're not really implementing anything new right now, just because it's, this is, like, really the first hard week we've jumped into it, but um, we've been really just keeping everything fresh and reminding everybody what we've done in, over the spring. So is it like one two hour meeting for the week, or do you break it up thirty minutes a day, or one hour this day? How, yeah. How is it done? We uh, we broke this week. We broke it up every single day um, into uh, Monday through Thursday, and then we had a couple like um, like bumper today called us and like, and we all did like a little FaceTime thing with just us like the linebackers, and so like we did a lot of, we do, we're doing a lot of stuff. Like we have a bunch of like linebacker group texts without the coaches and we talk and get all together in that still. Um, but I don't know what, I know this past week we did it all. We spread it out throughout every single day. We use the time limit through every day. Uh, I don't know how we're going to do it next week because, uh, I guess someone was saying, I saw something on Twitter and you guys may know more about this than I do, but something about it changing to more time limit. Um, but, so I'm guessing we'll probably still do the same thing. Like we'll break it up Monday through like Friday or Monday through Thursday. Grant, what's the structure of this defense? What's the base structure of this defense? Uh, we've heard, you know, that there'll, there'll, there'll be a three-four, a four-two-five. What what yeah. does it look like? It's going to be because Coach Bowden's run just about everything. Yeah, and I'll tell you right now, I would be very shocked if we ran anything less than everything this year. So. Um, we are going to, our base, our, our, we, when we say base and we send out everybody, it's going to be a three, two, six. And, um, it's like a variation. I obviously, it's a variation of three, three, but you have an extra nickel and you have an extra DB to be able to stop the passing that everyone wants to do. But you got the variation with the middle safety to be able to come down and fit the run gaps with stuff that we needed and stuff that we're going to need this year. And, um, Jalen can talk more about the middle safety type. Um, but, we are, we already have a couple of, uh, we have like a razor. We have different jack oakies, different type of things that we have where we can put four down. We can run a multiple defense through over unders. And when we do four down, we have a lot of different personnel that we have from last year because we were four down on defense. And it's just, it's, it fits more smooth. We haven't put a ton of that in just because we have a ton of people that already know how to run that. Uh, we're just going to change the verdict. Um, but no, three, two, six would be our base. Um, but you know, Coach Odom. You've seen his stuff in the past. Missouri's had a very good defense. Like um, Memphis had a very good defense with him, so he knows what to do to get people uh, in the right spot and get them to be a successful defense. Uh, this will be my last question for now. I've got more, but I'll pass it on to somebody else. But this is for Jalen. Uh, just kind of to piggyback on that a little bit, your role in this defense, um, are you 
one of these extra safeties? Are you a free safety, strong safety, nickel? And also, what are these positions called specifically since there are six defensive backs? Sometimes, you know, we hear stuff like Razor, Bandit, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, so I think what uh, I love Coach Odoway do right now as far as everything goes that we don't have a we don't have a depth chart as far as who's one, two, or three. I think he believes in our DBs and that everyone can play right now. So we're kind of rotating the spot. So, you know, one day uh, you might be a free safety, and the next day you might be a, 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 boundary, a boundary safety or a strong safety. Or one day you might be a nickel, and, you know, before you know you might be moved to the corner one time to see how you are. It's just I think he wants to see how your mind works, make sure you know every single spot. I think that's what he's really trying to emphasize, make sure the defense is always on the same on the same page and make sure everybody knows the positions, where everybody's supposed to do. But like Grant said, you know, I think, like, you know, base is going to be a 3-2-6. But um, just like seeing Coach Odom, what he's done in the past with his teams, I mean, there, we'll probably have a lot of things um, get installed and put in down the road and stuff like that. But, you know, I guess I think, uh, everyone's real flexible as far as where they can play, so uh, you really can't get comfortable in one spot because you have to know everything because you never know where you're going to put in that position. So uh, I know I'm working middle safety right now and a little bit of strong, but like like I said, I'll probably end up moving around, just uh, try every position and see. Uh, and from there, Coach Otto will make a decision based off of you know where I best fit at to help defense out to be most successful. And just real quick, uh, Jalen, could you just name the, the spots? You said middle safety, strong safety. I assume is the free safety, nickel. What are, what are the? Oh, oh yeah. So uh, of course, two corners. You got two corners, of course, and then you got middle safety, boundary, uh, strong, and then you have uh, the nickel. That's the uh, that's what the uh, positions are. Okay, thanks. I'm good for now, y'all. Thanks, Jay. Tom, go down to Tom. How about this time? Can you hear me? Go ahead, Tom. Hey, Tom, can you repeat that? You kind of cut out there. Yeah, Tom, we can't. We can barely hear you. A little better, but it sounds like you're underwater. All right, Tom, we're going to come back to you. Nate? Uh, yeah, I sure do. Uh, Grant, you made the comment about you know playing a different kind of football. Just what do you mean by that? And, you know, what what do you mean a different kind of football? Well, different kind of football as in just the mindset of who we're rallying behind. And just this is we're trying to be a whole different brand. Like we don't want to we don't want to go back and do what we did last year. We don't want to put we don't ever want to repeat what we did last year again. I don't care how many years we have Arkansas football is here. Um, when I say different kind of football, um, I want to be able to be we're, we're, we want to be winners in the win column every single weekend. Uh, but we just want to be tough. We just want to have guys that want to play football. Uh, we want to just set an example for what it years to come. It's just like we want to be that first team to start something here at Arkansas. Um, when I say different, obviously a lot of things are changing differently. Like we're changing to a whole different uh, defense. We're going to be swarming the football. We want to have a ton of turnovers. We want to be able to just be just guys that are around the ball and um, conditioning wise, like like I was speaking earlier about the winter conditioning, like we've been work, working on a lot of speed training. Like we were working on a lot of just power movements and stuff that we uh, we did in the past, but we're putting so much emphasis on it this year. And uh, we're we have guys buying in, changing their bodies like crazy. And um, I know the offense right now and the little stuff that we did uh, just with them, like without any coaches. Like I know the offense is going to go really quick and. Um, I'm not going to speak for Mike, but 
I know the receivers are really bought into it. And, like, they're lining up super quick. Like, this is the fastest we've seen the offense just going. And, like, we just want to be able to just be what we want to, like, what we, we want to put on the field what we talk about. And that's just always what we've always tried to do, but what we're going to plan on doing this year. Has the, was the weight room different? I mean, did, did you all do different kind of drills this year with, with uh, Coach Walker than you did previously? Yeah, uh, we did. We've done a lot of stuff where we call it, if we do, like, last year at this, like, the winter conditioning with old staff, we would do different kind of competitions. We do team competitions as our, um, like, con- like, like, team. It was, like, team bonding, but it was also, like, during that drill time. We did mad drills with old staff, and this this year's staff is a conti- like a t- continuous circuit where we really just had no breaks at all, and we were just continually moving like it was a game, but it was based around like six seconds of a game. And so your rep was six seconds, and you got a little break, and then it was six seconds, and you had to run to every single aspect of the field where we would change different coaches, where they would t- uh, coach you a different drill, and you had to learn on the spot. And they would change up the drills every other day, um, so you would just have to adapt to them. Um, just stuff that we haven't been put into, and it made us uncomfortable, and it made us grow through it. And once you finally got comfortable with it, and then they would change it again. Um, so it's just stuff like that. It's the little things that people don't realize. Like we we have guys buying in uh, more than we ever have. We have seniors that have changed the bodies completely. We have freshmen that are looking at these seniors saying, "Okay, well, I guess this is the time. Like I'm not going to wait till my senior year." Like and they're all fighting for a spot. So it's just good the culture around the facilities just from not it's not it's not coach Pittman's team it's not Graham Morgan's team it's not anyone else's team it's Arkansas we're all in this together and I just want everyone to realize like we, we're changing it through as a culture from the players out and uh, it'll just change around the state too Thanks. Uh, Jalen just in your register year because I guess you had one game you just came in and kind of did a kneel down just at the West of Kentucky game is that really where you kind of made it worthwhile as a, as a redshirt year could be for you start getting playing time oh uh, yeah um, I mean how the games went last year that's last year you know played Western Kentucky and uh, it was good to get that experience and uh, get kind of that game under my belt where I actually got a good amount of reps and a good amount of plays under my belt and stuff like that but uh, at the same time it was a humbling year for me to kind of look back and learn from the older guys and kind of see how things were ran. You know, like Cam Curl, who declared is now a draft, you know, that's someone who I kind of looked up to and someone that I watched uh, who did things the right way and played the right way. And uh, I think that was something that I was glad I was able to see and learn from. And, you know, Joe Fouché, who played last year, who kind of learned from him a little bit. And uh, all the other DBs, stuff like that, who played. So, and just the defense itself. But, yeah, it was really, it was really good to get that game under my belt and be able to uh, kind of finally get back out there and get back into the group of things. So, you know, I'm kind of, uh, kind of excited to see how things are going to work down the road. But, you know, right now, right now I'm just keeping my head down, working hard, doing everything right, and making sure that uh, I do my best to make sure I put the team in the best position. And then, you know, I think from there, everything will take care of itself. So that's kind of my mindset on things. Like Graham's been through so many of these coaching changes, but this is for you first time. How's it been adjusting to you know, just the home staff compared to the staff that recruited you? Oh, yeah, it's definitely a transition, but I think that's what built us so strong with that. We had the older guys just kind of who've been through it before uh, kind of give us some uh, some guiding points and kind of just lead us through it all. And I think the staff came in. I think Coach Pittman did a really good job of just – emphasizing what he's about and making sure he, we understand that uh, he loves every single person on the team. He wants every single person a part of all this. You know, there wasn't no weeding out or anything like that. He wanted to make sure he established uh, his viewpoint on making sure that we're all bond as a team and we all come together as one and make sure that everyone's in this together. So it's been a great transition. I've loved uh, the new strength staff, how, they're, uh, how they operate. Uh, the workouts we've been doing along with the coaches and the means that we have and, you know, just kind of giving us life lessons too, making sure that we're good at life academic wise too. So all together has been really great so far and I'm excited to see how things uh, go down the road. And finally for, for both you, yeah, I guess I'll pass Grant first. Just not having spring ball with a new staff, how, how, you know, how big a blow is that for you all to, to try and deal with and, and get started? Uh, 
um, yeah, uh, I'm I'm not gonna say it's a huge blow for us just because we have first coach. I guess it, it sucks, but um, life's about two things: um, the things that happen to you and how you respond to them. So we we're responding really well. Um, we we got to look in hindsight and see that every other team's going through this right now. So why can't we benefit from it more than anybody else? Uh, so we're we're trying our hardest to take one step above everyone right now and make use this as an advantage. This isn't a this isn't a threat to us. This is an opportunity. Uh, so to see that to see that every other team's having to go through this right now, um, it's just it's a uh, it's kind of not not a thing that we're like going down on because we know we can't control it, but we we can control our mindset to it. And uh, Jay Allen, same thing. Yeah, like Grant said, I mean. Like every every team uh, in the country is dealing with this, so it's just who's gonna make the most out of it, and who's gonna uh, stay on top of things as far as uh, physic- physically and mentally. And I think uh, so far we handled really well, and I think it was really good. I think it's been good for us to have spring ball for sure. You know, I wanted to get out there for my first spring ball, but you know that's life. You know, sometimes you get hit with something, and it's just who's gonna respond when things like this happen. And so I know. Uh, Based off of the attitude we've had uh, throughout this whole process, I know that uh, as a team we're handling really well. I know people are taking care of things on their own, not just um, physically, football wise, but academically too, and just mental wise. So uh, I think everybody's going to do great with this. And when we finally get back on campus and get into back into the things, uh, I don't think it's, we're going to be. Uh, I think we'll be one step ahead based off of our production so far. Thanks, Steve. I'll pass them on to whoever's next. Thanks, Nate. Tom, you want to try again? Well, I'm on my laptop now. Can you hear me? We can. All right. Jen, I'm wondering about the two hours per week. What you guys do in that? What do you get out of it? Oh, we get a lot of it. Uh, we've done a great job of uh, being on time, making sure we're uh, locked in. Uh, Coach Autumn said we talk 30 minutes of ball. But those 30 minutes are critical because every single second counts. You know, that one second can be the term of everything. So uh, no matter how you get it in, you got to get it in while you can. So those means are really, we, we take those really uh, very serious and we make sure we get the most out of it. You know, we'll kind of just go through some, um, just kind of refresh us on the, uh, what we're going to do with the defense, make sure we know our spots and everything. And also just kind of talk about it like life lessons, you know making sure we're good in life, make sure we're um, knowing everything that's going around in society and making sure that we're educated on that. So I think Coach Odom does a great job with our DB group of just emphasizing not only just our uh, coverages and our defense as himself, but also just making sure uh, we understand life lessons and stuff like that and make sure that we become better men as well. So uh, we take those 30 minutes real seriously and we make sure we're locked in and know when that time comes and stuff like that. So, um, that's, that's kind of how that, that works out. I want to ask you about the kind of the attitude you took into the off-season conditioning because Coach Pittman touted you as a guy who's been leading and just been really impressive. Oh, yes, sir. I mean, I've always, I've always carried myself to work hard no matter what the situation is. So when a new staff came in, it wasn't, it didn't change, it wasn't going to change how I worked as a, uh, as a man. So I always, attacked every single thing I did like it was the last drill I was going to have to do and that's just kind of how my mind process is and I think uh, what made it even better was just seeing the commitment of my of the teammate of the team itself and just everyone and the leadership we had with the older guys you know uh, the older guys kind of set that foundation and now we just have to carry that on and make something out of it so I just want to be that guy that everybody looked at and said yeah that's, that's the guy that works hard that's the guy that's going to uh, put everything on line because at the end of the day that's what matters. So that's kind of the impression I want to have for my teammates. It was just that sign of respect. I just want to make sure they respect me as a worker and know that when I step on that field or if I step in that meeting room or wherever I step at, it's going to be me giving everything I have for the team. So that's kind of what I wanted to uh, leave my impression as. All right. In um, fall camp last year, you had some picks, some pick sixes, and we were a little surprised that you didn't get in the rotation a little bit more. What do you – what do you feel like was holding you back from getting in? Uh, I don't know. It's, I mean, that's that's a little, that's just kind of a coaching, coaching and player thing. But uh, at the end of the day, uh, last year was just 
last year, last year, you know, what, what happened last year. I'm worried about the future, what's down the road, you know. Um, I was just glad I was able to get a, a game under my belt and able to play and uh, get get some reps in and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, at the end of the day, I'm just worried about what's down the road for me and uh, to help this team out be the best it can be. And I plan on doing the same thing for fall camp, just working hard, just keeping my head down and just making sure I put my defense and put my team in the best situation it can be for it to be successful. So, um, and then just learn from, keep learning and keep growing as a, uh, as a man, as a player and, um, just let everything else take care of itself. So that's my plan going down the road and, uh, going from there. And then hopefully if I take care of all that, I'll be able to make an impact, uh, on the field. But at the end of the day, I just want to uh, grow and just be the best player I can be. Okay, cool. Kyle, do you have Mike Woods yet? No, we're trying to track Mike down. All right. I'm, I'm ready to pass it on. Thanks. Unmuted. What? Yeah, Jalen, uh, I was just wondering, uh, your sh uh, I guess you had shoulder surgery late in the year. Uh, could you maybe tell us you know, how that injury happened, when it happened, and, and how's the recovery gone, and are you 100% now? Uh, yes, uh, it, it was. Uh, it happened actually back in high school, and, you know, i kind of been dealing with it, but it really didn't affect me until kind of uh, into the season. I started feeling it a little bit as far as I make contact or using my shoulder whatsoever, so... Uh, that's when they kind of went to uh, the trainer and they kind of told me what the situation was. I had like a slight tear in my labor. And, uh, so I already had three games under my belt. So I just played that Western Kentucky game and uh, just kind of got surgery after that game. But uh, shoulder healed really good. The trainers did a really good job with me and making sure that I was consistent with my uh, therapy and making sure I was on time. And they gave me some great workouts to do. And my shoulder is 100% now. And uh I'm good to go, and I'm fully uh, active to do everything. So once everything kicks back off, I'll be good to go. But, yeah, I'm making sure that I keep a therapy consistent down here, too, make sure I do some shoulder workouts and make sure it stays, uh, stays as strong as it can be. So um, shoulder's feeling great. And, um, like I said, when things get back going, I'll be good to go. And I guess you said it was kind of bothering you all year. So, I mean, is that maybe what – led you to not playing as many snaps in those first three games or would you have preferred to play a little bit more in those games uh how, how do you how was that um uh every 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 person wants to be on the field if they uh where they get the chance to so i mean i don't think that was a factor uh they think me playing because i know like you know joe had a, sh a shoulder problem too but you know he played through it so i know it was something that i could play through it as well you know there's a guy like, hayden henry in linebacker he had a little shoulder problem but he uh, played through it as well, so uh, I don't think that was a factor or anything like that. But, um, yeah, like I said, uh, you know, it was just one of those things where uh, it's out of my control. I just, you know, like I said, I just kept my head down, worked hard, and learned, uh, just kept growing. And so, you know, I'm just glad that back to 100% now and I'm able to uh, be a, uh, reach, um, hopefully reach my full, uh, full potential as uh, things go down the road. But, I guess I'm excited for things that are going to happen down the road. Gotcha. And then Grant, I was wondering, uh, you said you've got a friend that has a, a, a weight room and everything that you're able to work out in, but you're working out by yourself. I mean, is that difficult doing that with yourself compared to a team setting? How, how is that different? Okay, so you caught me lying. I'm not, <laughs> not going to lie. I work out with my wife, Sydney. She's there. So... Not alone, but uh, yes, different from working out with the team. I've always been, I grew up, my dad and brother, they've always, like, it's always been just them pushing me, and I always, I hated it because Drew would always lift more than me, so I had to find an internal way, and that's what made Drew so good, too. We had to find internal ways to push ourselves, and I think anybody in the SEC really has that same little motor. Like, they don't have to be next to a team to push themselves, and uh, it's been difficult, just the, the super quick transition, because we didn't expect to be here. Um, but us being here now for this, I think our third week off, or second and a half week off, and I think if you if, if you're on a team in college football and you're not working out or finding a way to work out or finding your own motivation, then you're going to be the guys that people are going to say, "Wow, they really didn't take a step forward over that break." Um, but no, it's been it's been challenging, but it's not. I'm not going to say it hasn't been done. Uh, I've done I've done well, pushing myself, finding new ways to work out. Um, it's kind of 
I've become my own personal trainer. It's pretty fun. I, I create my own workouts. I create everything uh, all the way down to motivation. I make my own meals. We're becoming chefs. So it's, it's fun. It's a fun little break, but it's something I don't want to be here. Uh, but it, it's got to be done. But I, I know it's been fun. Gotcha. Well, that's all I got. Thanks, guys. Thank you. All right. We, uh, we've got Mike Woods on the call with us here. Uh, let's go back up here to uh, talk. Yeah, it's time for Mike. All right. Hey, Mike, we kind of went over this with the other two, but... Muted. The two hours per week that you guys did this week, can you describe what those are like, what you get out of them, and can you handle more? Uh, it was... We did basically normal position meetings that were uh, already used to doing and actually meet up. So, I mean, it was good. We went over some things that we uh, needed to go over. And it just it kind of was a refresher to our minds. So I thought it was really good. We got some good things out of this week. And we could definitely handle this month. How comfortable do you feel with the playbook right now? And how important is it that you guys get out and do it on the field? I mean, because this team hasn't had one spring practice. Is yes, uh, I'm pretty. We're, we are all pretty comfortable with it right now. Uh, like I said, we just had to get a little refresher because it's been a little mini since we could actually meet up with it. But uh, obviously getting out on the practice field would do us a lot of help. We need that. But as far as knowing what we need to do, I believe that uh, we're pretty good in that trade. And I have one question for you about Felipe. What have you What have you uh, made of him, his makeup, and, and his potential to become a leader on this team? Uh, he's a... His makeup, he's a, he's a big dude, and uh, he can really throw the ball. And as far as being the leader, I think he came in and did a great job. Uh, guys respect him. Uh, he's loud. He's going to uh, he let guys know, like, what's up when he needs to let them know. So I think I think he'll be real good for us, and I'm excited. Okay, I'm moving on. Thanks. Thank you. Bob, you got more questions? Um, yeah, this would be for Grand Jalen. You know, at, at the end of the year, you guys are playing you know, Barry Odom's Missouri team in Little Rock, and then I guess within a, a few weeks, he's your new uh, defensive coordinator. What, what do you guys think about that? And just kind of what, what what's it been like? What, what's your take on, on Coach Odom? Maybe Grant, you take that first, then, then Jalen? Yeah. Um, I'll just say I'm super happy he's on our side. Uh, I'm tired of playing him, and I'm glad he's on our side. I was getting in that because he's a dang good coach, and I've noticed that and realized that right away. Um, I met him early January. I came back up here. Or no, it might have been whenever it was the first week he got hired. It was like his first time in Fayetteville almost, and I drove down here. I drove back up to Fayetteville, and me and Bumper met with him, and we, uh, I, I've liked him ever since the day I met him. Um, he's just a guy who you know is going to work his butt off and just a guy I know that we can all get behind and just rally and play for. And that's what you need as a defensive, uh, just a defense coordinator. You need a guy to just be able to play for and just be able to know that they're caring just as much as you. And, um, ever since the day I met Coach Odom, he's just, he's, he's been the same guy ever since then and he's going to be the same guy, I think, from here on out. And, uh, I know Jalen probably knows him more, so I'll go ahead and pass to him. Oh, yeah, Coach Odom, he's, he's consistent. He's a good, I mean, he's a good guy. I mean, he'll come in and uh, just kind of ask how everything's going, make sure we're all good, and then when it comes time to talk about ball or when it comes time to talk about anything, I mean, it's, it's all business and it's serious. You know, he's a serious guy, and he's really educated on the game. He knows what he's talking about. You know, it's I just feel like everything with him is just, uh, he makes sure it's precise and makes sure everything is on point, makes sure everyone's in the right spot. 
And just not even just in football, just also in life, making sure we get life lessons out of everything we do and making sure that we grow as a unit and also as uh, individually as a man. So um, the first time, I know Coach Odo, he, uh, he's actually recruiting me. Uh, one of first coach, he's one of uh, the first coach to offer me too. So I think that was a, uh, when I met with him, he kind of mentioned that too, saying it was definitely going to happen. So, you know, it's, like I said, it's crazy how things work out. But uh, yeah, like I said, I'm glad to have him as our defense coordinator as a position coach because he's a great guy. Um, like I said, he knows, his, he knows his stuff. And I'm just excited to just learn his uh, system and just kind of grow as a player with him as well. And Grant, I, I, I guess I, I was out of it. I didn't realize you'd gotten married. Um, are you guys living in Fayetteville, or where, where are you guys living? Yes, we have a, we have a house in Fayetteville. Uh, she um, she's getting her master's in speech pathology right now. Uh, so she and she's up there at U of A. So um, she'll be done in I think next May. So uh, yeah, she's we've been together for around seven years now. So we got married January 4th and we had all football, all grooms and football boys and everything. But it was fun. Uh, but yeah, we're living in Fayetteville. We're down here in Fort Smith right now over this little break because we can't, there's nowhere for me to work out up in Fayetteville. So we're just kind of going back and forth to check on the house. Um, but no, yeah. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll turn it back over to Cal. Thanks, Bob. Tara? How about Scotty? How about Scotty? Yeah, Jalen, um, I guess just outside of the, the video conferences and, and the workouts that you're doing, what are you doing to, to stay busy? What kind of hobbies do you got? Hobbies, so, I mean, right now, like, all this is really, I mean, Netflix-wise, I just watch a lot of Netflix and YouTube, stuff like that. Like, I have that with all American and stuff like that, so. I'm just trying to find new shows, things to watch to uh, entertain myself. And um, I know, like, my parents got a couple board games that they want us to play, like Connect Four and stuff like that. So it's kind of bringing me back to my childhood and stuff like that. But, um, I mean, besides all that, it was just working out and then just doing that right now. So I'd say those would probably be my hobbies right now, to be honest. <laughs> And Grant, I was just curious how married life is going. Have you learned anything new about Sydney since you guys were quarantined? Yeah. Um, she still likes me as of now, so I think I'm doing good. It's been three months. But, uh, yeah, uh, we just living together. It's just fun. You learn things. I learn something new every day. Um, things I do wrong, things I do wrong again. Uh, but... It's fun, uh, especially being down here. It's fun, just a new aspect of it. Um, but, yeah, we've been staying busy. I've been fishing with some of my buddies that are we're keeping our six feet away. Um, but we're, we're just going through life, just trying to be as clean and washing my hands as much as I can. Other than that, just working out kind of like David and, and figuring out. I, I hate watching TV. I don't watch Netflix. Uh, but I, we did do some – we did a puzzle. That was fun. But other than that, just hanging out. I appreciate it, guys. Yes, sir. Hey, did, you, did you have anything else? Are you asking me, Kyle? Yeah. Keep in mind, we got Mike yeah. on here now, too. Yeah. Hey, uh, I was wondering, Mike, first of all, if you could go over just a little bit more detail on Felipe, just kind of not so much, you know, you talked on it, you know, leadership and interaction with the team, but, like, what he brings to the table physically, um, what what you've been able to see from him. Uh, well, we didn't <clears throat> we didn't get a chance to, uh, you know what I'm saying, see all of that. But as far as uh, throwing routes with him, uh, like I said, he got good zip on the ball. He can throw it deep. Uh, he's accurate. Uh, I think he's going to be real good for us. I don't know. Uh, as far as running the ball, I think he'll be able to do that when he needs to. And so I think he'll be real good for us. Like I said, uh, I enjoy uh, catching routes with him and stuff like that. A couple other 
newcomers that you've got uh, at wide receiver, Darren Turner, and then at tight end, Blaine Toll. I was wondering if you could maybe touch on what you've seen out of those guys in the, in the offseason workouts and stuff, what they could think, possibly bring to I think Blaine Toll is a very huge human, especially for his age. And um, I think he's going to be real good. Um, he's getting his technique down and stuff like that, but overall he's just a very huge human. <laughs> and I think he's going to be really good. Um so what did you say? And Darren Turner. Oh, yeah, DT. Yeah, he'll be real good for us, too, as well. He's uh, going through the technique and getting better every day. Uh, he's working out real good. He put on a lot of weight. He put on, like, 15 pounds or something when he came in. So he, he's, like, he's up there, like, in the 200s. Uh, and so he's a good-looking dude as far as his body. And I think he'll be real good for us as well. So. Thanks. Hey, hey Jalen. Uh, I was wondering if you could tell me the same about Miles Slusher, what you've uh, what you've witnessed out of him in the in the early part. Oh, um, he he knows the game. Great great technique. Um, has really good feet, and he has a real good understanding uh, of where he's at. You know, he, I, he, you can tell he's played the game since he was young. I mean, the way he moves, uh, just just his footwork itself. I mean, he's got real good feet. And uh, I can just tell that, you know, you can just tell by someone when they just know the game. You just uh, you can tell he knows the game real well. He's going to be a really good player for us. And, uh, yeah, I'll just watch out for him. I mean, he's, I mean, he's had a really good offseason as well. He's worked hard, he works hard. I know that he's one person that I compete with and, uh, and push, and he pushes me too. So, um, yeah, watch out for him. He's, I mean, he's, yeah, he's, he, he's legit. He's straight out, he's legit. Did you spend much time with Slusher when he was being recruited? Did you ever get a feel for for where he was headed? Uh, we so we we knew each other a little bit. So we played seven on seven with each other uh, when we were in high school. So I kind of got to know him playing seven on seven with him, and uh, I know that he had a hit interest in Arkansas. So when he came up for his official visit, I was uh, able to host him and. Uh, uh, he really enjoyed it. He kind of talked ball a little bit. Just kind of talked about his future and kind of the aspect of him saying, you know, he's be taken care of and all that. But um, you know, he just uh, it's glad that it worked out. He came to Arkansas. I'm glad to have him on the team, you know. And uh, yeah, we were real cool with each other. He's, uh, like I said, a good person, and like I say he's a baller. So yeah, uh, Arkansas fans should be excited about him. He's uh, he's legit. Hey, Shalen, it's uh, the last one, but uh, for Grant, I was wondering if you could tell me about the other two guys. And, and is it Burl or Burley? I believe it's Burl, but Kellen, Burl, and uh, and also Julius Coates out of uh, junior college. What they've uh, what you send from them in the fall season? Uh, yeah, it's Keelan Burl. Uh, Keelan, he, uh, he's with uh, mm-hmm. season working. Uh, he, um, we always joke with him. He, he's a young buck in the group, so we're always saying, like, he's got to get out of that freshman mindset. He's got to become a college football player now and get out of high school and so uh, I called him yesterday and I was joking with him about uh, gaining a lot of weight while he was back in Louisiana uh, but he, he did well over these past three months um, he was just adapting to the uh, workout still and just coming along we were bringing him along and he was starting to learn everything he's just still he's still a freshman like he's still adapting to uh, just college life he's being able to go to class and now it's completely different he's got to be able to do it all online um, but he he looked well. He's a good frame, good good build. He's an athlete, just like every other kid that comes from Louisiana that, that gets an athlete. Uh, and the Julius Coates, um, he's a guy you're going to look and he's going to make like Mike Wood said, Blaine Toll. Like he's going to make Blaine Toll look small. And thing is, Blaine Toll is a huge human being. And so Julius Coates, he's got that exact build that you want. Um, he runs super hard. He's super quiet. Doesn't talk to really anybody. Uh, we, uh, Coach Walker got on to all of us and said that we needed to be more talkative to everybody and especially him. And we all tried to talk to him and he just like glass and just giggles. And, but, uh, D line, he's really fitting with the D line of John Marshall and Isaiah Nichols and them. And they're really bringing him on. Um, he has some forces of nature that you, you can't teach in football. You just, just God given. And, uh, he's going to be able to use it. He's real strong, real quick, uh, agile, everything. Um, but we just got to bring him along. Just uh, this is a big time for him. Hopefully, uh, the D line, which I know they're still getting together, I'm talking to John about it, and uh, so just for him to be able to take a step during this time is big, especially coming from JUCO. Uh, but 
but Coach Rhodes knows him a little bit, and so we uh, we're bringing him both of those two both along. But they're they're fitting in just right. They're just they're good. They'll be all right with everything going along with everybody, and they're doing really good. Appreciate you, Grant. I'm good. Thank you. Yep. Thanks, Trey. Uh, Dudley, do you have anything? No, I'm good. Nate, did you have anything from Mike? Uh, yeah, I do. Uh, Mike, just what does it mean you to have uh, Coach Skip come, come back and continue coaching you? Sir? How about having Justin Skip come back and return to continue coaching receivers? Just kind of what does what that mean to you? Oh, I mean, it was great because we don't we don't have to go through the uh, getting to – you know, like, cause I, every other position group, they had a new coach. So it's like we didn't have to go through that whole phase of getting to know someone and getting to know the coaching style and all that kind of stuff. Things kind of, uh, as far as that, stayed the same for us. So we didn't really have to go through that change. So as far as having to get acclimated to the new coaching staff, that part made it a lot easier for us. So I thought that was a great, uh, that was a great thing for all of us to be able to uh, keep the same coach. And also with K.J. Jefferson, has he been able to do anything you know, off his surgery? Have you all worked with him at all before? In the fall yes, sir. He's been, he's been throwing with us as well. Uh, I think he's been looking he's been looking good. He's got some real zip on the ball. Like he, he throws that thing. But, uh, I think he's been looking real good coming off his shoulder injury. They've, he's been working with the trainers every day. So he's getting that flexibility back. And I, I think he looks real good. As we, he, we know, he's a big guy. He can run the ball. He can throw the ball, so he's looking really good as well. And finally, Grant said, like defense, and just, he just feels like a completely different type of football. Do you feel that same way offensively, that this is kind of a, a, a new beginning for you all? Still there? Mike, Mike you there? What did you say, sir? Uh, did, did, as far as Grant said something about like on defense, they feel like it's a whole different type of football. Do you, is offense kind of feeling the same way with the new staff and new, you know, just new uh, beginning for y'all? Yes, sir. It's like it's like a new system, but um, for me, is what like it's kind of close to my high school uh, style of offense because uh, Coach Brown, he played. I believe he played under my high school head coach. And a lot of the offense has, has similarities. So my change, it was kind of like I had to go back to uh, some of the high school uh, like set up uh, as far as with the offense. But I think uh, it's real. It's a real sim- it's simple for us all. So it, it really makes the game uh, less thinking. I, I think for all of us, and it allows us to play a lot faster. So I think it was a, it's a great system as far as being able to play fast. Thanks. Otis, do you have any? Unmuted. Yeah, I do. I got one. To... Muted. Uh, just uh, talk about, the other day Coach Pittman was on here and he talked about what a leader you've become at wide receiver. You're, you're the leader of that group. Talk about that, just Coach Pittman talking about that and kind of how you stepped up in that role. Oh, uh, I mean, I don't. I don't really, honestly, I don't try to, I tried to be more vocal, but as far as what I do on the day to day, I didn't really try to, I don't try to do or try to be that, like, it's just, I just work hard and people just, I guess, gravitate towards that. And, um, just like, they like, kind of like want to follow me in that sense. And so I'm more than happy to step up into that role, but that's just natural. Like, I just, I guess I, I just work hard and, I just come every day with that mindset, like, we got to get better. Like, we want to change uh, what's been going on around here for the past year. So, uh, I just try to come in and attack every day no matter how I'm feeling. And because I feel like if I attack every day, you know, if, even if I'm feeling bad, then these guys have no choice but to follow in in my actions. Unmuted. Hutch, do you have any more? No, I'm good. All right, I'm going to open back everybody here. Do we, uh, 
Does anyone have any more questions uh, for Mike, Grant, or Jason? Can you guys hear me now? Yeah, this is Bob again. Carol, what you got? Oh, sorry. We were just having some issues over here. Um, I know you guys kind of touched on it a little bit earlier, but is it concerning at all knowing that, you know, the time you have to learn this muted reps in it right now is, is being cut back? Maybe just Mike, oh. you want to start that off. All right, let's start. Um, I mean, it's not, I mean, as far as being concerned, no, we're not concerned because uh, we're still keeping up with, like, the system and the playbook and stuff. And on top of that, we're all, everybody in the nation's in the same boat. And we're, we just got to do what we can do to get that step ahead of everybody else right now in this time right here so we can come back uh, whenever we're allowed to come back and just be able to come back and be able to click and jump into things and not have to reteach stuff that we already went over and stuff that we're going over right now. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm good, guys. Thank you. Bye, right, Bob. Yeah, this, yeah. I guess for, uh, for Grant and Jalen, just uh, how good do you you obviously have to get mental reps. You can't get physical reps. How, how do you feel about uh, how much of the defensive playbook you guys have gotten and how, what, what the installment's been like? Uh, maybe Grant could take that first. Yeah. Um, I know, so this has been the fourth defense I've learned over the years, and I know this is probably the most simple defense we've learned just to be able to let us just fly around. All the language about this defense is just super, um, just easy. They all match everything that goes with something else, so it all kind of correlates with everything. Uh, so it, it makes it super simple. So I know over the past four years of being here, this is probably, we're farther, right, so leading up to spring, we're farther than we ever were with the new defense. Um, we could, we obviously could go play a game right now, but we would not want to at all just because you have to be able to have certain things. Uh, but we, I feel comfortable enough, and especially the guys learning the defense and uh, even the new guys, the freshmen and JUCO guys, I feel like we could, we have a very good basis, like a ground level basis that we have uh, established through Coach Odom and just the whole defense. But no, I think we're on track. Um, I think we're a little ahead just because of this virtual reality or the virtual meetings and stuff that it's going to give us a boost. Um, but I really do think we'll take that extra step, and I think we're doing more than I think other, I, I have players that are friends that are on other colleges and I think we're doing more than some of those guys uh, already. And, and Jalen, what do you think on that? Yeah, so I mean, man, I know Grant has more experience with new coaching changes and defenses like you said, the sport defense he's learned, so this is my second defense I learned, but like you said, yeah, it's very, it's very simple to the point. I think it fits, I think it fits where our defense is and that's just uh, being able to fly around and just uh, make plays. Like I said, I know the defense has you know, so we have a lot of DBs on the field, so I know it's like it, it all comes down to uh, the DBs. But I think it's good for us because I think at the end of the day, I feel like our group, um, our group is very, uh, very athletic and they're very, um, they're very agile. You can move around, you can do a lot of things, and uh, like I said, I think the defense is based off of. I think everybody feels real comfortable about that's the main thing. I think everyone's. As far as us beginning it, I think everybody feels really comfortable about it. I mean, as far as when we go to our meetings, I think everybody knows what everyone's supposed to do, where everybody has to be at. And to have a defense like that at a very early stage, I think that's very effective because I know we're only going to grow uh, throughout the meetings that we have online and stuff like that. And I know we're all keeping very consistent communication on it to make sure everybody studies the playbook and make sure we stay on top of that. So. But as far as the defense goes, I mean, like I said, it's very, 